This is a Raspberry Pi. And it's basically a mini PC with some of the worst specs you'll ever see. Some of the newer ones actually have decent specs, but this one is from seven years ago. So naturally, we're going to install Windows 11 on it. Now, there is actually an official supported operating system for this, which I think is already installed on this SD card. So let's see how well this runs, what it's actually supposed to run. We got cables. Okay, I got everything plugged in, but it doesn't look like we're accomplishing anything. Time to break out the Chromebook. Oh, um, never mind. It's booting into Raspberry Pi OS right now. All right, so here we're on Raspberry Pi OS, and honestly, it's pretty fast considering it's a Raspberry Pi. But obviously, one question remains, can it run Minecraft? So far, I gotta say it's not looking great because it is taking a while to load this. Wait, I don't know what version to get. Actually, I have heard of something called Minecraft Pi Edition. I don't know how to get it, but... Oh, dude, I can pick the features? What? Let's go with tiny, this thing's already struggling enough. Okay, that launched surprisingly fast. Side note, the Pi is like a million degrees at the moment. All right, looks like we're in. This is some high quality gaming right here. You know, I can see why they call it tiny render distance. I didn't even try full screen yet, oh no. Oh no, this is like one FPS. All right, enough messing around, it's time for Windows 11. We're breaking out the Chromebook. Oh, why did it turn off? And we also got a brand new micro SD card to run Windows. Now, I have researched this extensively, and we will not, in fact, be using the Raspberry Pi imager. Instead, Windows on R. I don't know why they didn't put the rest of it, but there you go. Although you do have to do this on Windows PC, so give me a second. The external Windows hard drive. I just got to boot from that really quick. Yeah, this might take a second. And now we install Windows. Okay, this is weird. I was pretty sure I put Tiny11 on this, but I guess not. Step one, download the Windows 11 IoT Enterprise LST. Step two, download the Windows on Raspberry Imager. Step three, wait 40 years because ISO files are really big. All right, it's done. Let's get back to work. All right, now we run this. Okay, this one, Raspberry Pi 2.3. Select the image. Oh, come on, seriously? Basically, that version was too new, so I'm downloading an ESD of an older version, which I then have to convert to an ISO. So we also need this thing, which is a 7-zip file. So we also need 7-zip. Let me just set this all up. It's all set up, and hopefully this should work. Yeah, I have no clue if this is working at all. Okay, I don't know what just happened there. Let's review the footage. Okay, what does that mean? All right, I got a new converter. I don't know if this one's gonna work, but it's like official or something, maybe. It seems to have detected the file and maybe it's doing something. Yeah, it just said unknown architecture and closed. Gotta say, I'm not feeling great about this at the moment. All right, we got a different ESD file this time. Hopefully it'll work with this one. Yeah? And we got the same thing. Okay, I don't know what happened, but I tried the original converter again and it looks like it's finally working. So supposedly it's creating the file right now. All right, it's day two. I'm feeling good. The ISO finished. Let's get Windows. So now we can actually select the image, which should be somewhere in here. Yep. All right, let's hit next here. And now we just let it install. The installation has completed. Just gotta take this out. Just throw this in here. And with that, it's finally time to turn on the Raspberry Pi. Monitor's turning on, that's a good sign. And that's Windows 11, let's go. I kinda think this will take forever because it's an SD card, but you never know, maybe it'll be really fast. Oh, a sign of life. We got a new screen. I gotta say it's not running the fastest, but it is moving, so that's progress. I am fairly sure that took like 30 minutes, but it is actually the next day now. Yo, yo, the setup's actually working. Uh, well, really slowly, apparently. Okay, that probably took like a minute. Yeah, this might take a while. It did take 20 minutes, but we're finally on the account page. That's good. The Pi over here is probably running at like a cool million degrees. Loading animation is probably 5 FPS at the most. But hey, it's running, and now it's still loading. Like, you can't even run the loading animation that fast. Another 5 minutes later, and I think it is loading the desktop just just like really, really slow. Okay, I can use the taskbar and the start menu and stuff. Oh, there it is. We're officially running Windows on a Raspberry Pi 3. Now, I'm pretty sure it's trying its absolute best over here to launch Microsoft Edge, but I'm not sure it's gonna happen. Maybe partially because we only have one gigabyte of RAM. Yeah, it did not launch. But that's okay, because I just ran Windows 11 on It's me again. And I bet you thought that was the end. I bet you thought I wasn't gonna do the most I possibly could to make Windows 11 actually usable on a Raspberry Pi. And I wasn't until I realized how late in the video would have been without it. So we're back. And the first thing I need to do is try and launch an app. Now, this might be a great struggle, but I'm pretty sure it's possible. Specifically, I need Windows PowerShell. Now I have right clicked on this because I think it brings up the administrator thing. Oh no, it just showed up over here. Wait, let's click that. Okay, I clicked it. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit. Okay, we got here. This is totally progress. It'll probably take another 40 years to get off of this, but we'll take it. Okay, it launched. I'm not sure if I can type anything in yet though. All right, here we go. Let's see if this works and how long it takes. Actually, that's probably the main thing. Seven minutes, but it's finally showing something now at least. We got the actual window. Now I just have to click on tweaks and hope that it actually works, which it probably will after like 10 minutes or so. All right, here we go. We're checking everything. 
well, everything that like adds performance. Okay, apparently the tweaks are done after a while and now I just need to restart it, which will probably also take a while because the start menu is still really slow. Okay, it started back up and I gotta say it seems, um, I don't know, like marginally faster. That margin is kind of a lot though, honestly. Like, look, it can't even launch the file explorer now. It does take like 40 seconds to a minute, but hey, it launched. And look at this. I can sort of move the window around smoothly. No preview, but you know, you gotta make compromises somewhere. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, can it launch Microsoft Edge and run the Google Snake game? As everyone knows, this is the ultimate test of PC gaming performance. I don't really like to start here. It sort of looks like nothing is happening at all. I clicked it twice. This could be bad. I don't know what's gonna happen. Probably nothing, actually. The chances are nothing. That took a while. Let's start without our data. We made it to a new tab, sort of. It's still loading the new tab, which is sort of a bad sign. This actually has to be the slowest computer I've ever used. All right, here we go. Search in Google Snake. Now, if we can play this and it runs, this thing is an official gaming PC. Taking a while there, but I believe, I think it's gonna work. All right, here we go, moment of truth. Time to do the greatest, oh, my mouse doesn't even move. Oh, okay. Time to do the greatest gaming of all time. I clicked the button, by the way. It's just, it's just taking a second. Yep, any day now. Uh-oh, did the snake game just crash? Did Microsoft Edge just crash? Yeah, not quite a gaming PC, is it? You know what, I got farther than last time. I launched the browser and got to a website. And I mean, I installed Windows in the first place. That's the video.